All right, 24 hours after the last plane carrying U.S. forces left Afghanistan, President Biden addressed the American people this afternoon, proclaiming that the U.S. war in Afghanistan has come to an end. The decision to end the military lift operations at Kabul airport was based on the unanimous recommendation of my civilian and military advisors, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and all the service chiefs, and the commanders in the field. Meanwhile, between 100 and 200 Americans reportedly are still seeking evacuation, not to mention the thousands of Afghan allies who believe that the United States would save them from the Taliban. Will President Biden keep his promise to get out all of those who wish to leave Afghanistan? That's what he said this afternoon. Well, joining me now to talk about this and more is FRC's Executive Vice President, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, who is one of the original members of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. He also spent the last four years of his 36-year military career serving as Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. General, welcome back to the, pres to the program. Thank you, Tony. Glad to be with you. All right. The president says his actions were based upon the recommendation of his civilian and military leaders. Were they telling him what he wanted to hear or what he needed to hear? Now, Tony, I think we, we need to go back and listen to what he said again. He said the decision, I think, to end the longest war in American history was a unanimous recommendation. That may be true, and I suspect that it is. I don't know of anyone who wanted the war to continue. However, what he didn't say was that the, uh, there was a unanimous recommendation that he execute the plan that he executed, which is why we're where we are right now. That, was, uh, that plan was about as backwards as anything that I have ever seen. And they did everything wrong. He made every wrong decision. And he didn't say that that was a unanimous recommendation to do what they did. And therein lies one of the issues that you, along with a number of other uh, mil retired military leaders, have been raising, and that is the, um, the, the fact that some of the top military leaders we have are really not doing this country the service they should. They're, in fact, they're doing a disservice to the president by not speaking out and challenging some of the decisions that he's making. They are indeed, Tony, and uh, at their first uh, press conference, the the two of them together, the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, they said they didn't have adequate resources. They didn't have the resources that they needed to go out and get Americans and bring them in so that they could be rescued and evacuated. Well, there's a couple of problems with that. Number one, uh, you should have asked for the those uh, resources that you needed. You should have asked for the Delta Force, the Marines, the uh, SEAL Team 6, those rescue units. And the second thing that's wrong with that is if you did ask for them and you didn't get it, then you don't have the influence with the president that you need to have. Therefore, you don't need to be in the positions that you're in. And that's what our letter was about. It was about accountability. It was about accountability by two people that are key members of the president's national security apparatus. And they failed. One way or the other, they failed. And I think that's why we wrote this letter uh, asking for their resignation. Talking about uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Chairman of the uh, Joint Chiefs, uh, uh, General Mark Milley, Mark Milley to, uh, to, to step down. And that, uh, of course, was uh, signed by almost 100 retired generals and admirals. I think that number is actually growing. It is. Uh, as the letter gives out there, more want to sign on to it. Uh, let me go back to the, the, the president's decision to withdraw. Now, I, I listened to uh, his speech today, and quite frankly, I think he, he talked about a lot of things except what was at the heart of this. I think you're absolutely right. I didn't, agree, I didn't disagree with the fact that at some point we needed to get out of Afghanistan. I mean, 20 years of being in Afghanistan is a, a, a lengthy period of time, and we can't be the world's policemen and be everywhere. But it's the method in which we left that is at the heart of this issue, the fact that we really, I think, tucked, tailed, uh, tucked our tail and we ran. I want to play another clip of what the president had to say today. 
um, really kind of justifying this um, haphazard exit from the country. Clip number three, please. Previous administration's agreement said that if we stuck to the May 1st deadline that they had signed on to leave by, the Taliban wouldn't attack any American forces. But if we stayed, all bets were off. So we were letting the, the Taliban decide how and when we were going to be leaving? Yeah, I mean, look, clearly it's, uh, it's uh, former President Trump's fault. And, uh, you know, Tony, can I just say this? I, this is this is a black mark on American history, and I and I think that this is one of the darkest periods uh, in the 245 years that we've been a nation. And I think that going forward, we need to decide what we are uh, all about. What what do we stand for as a nation? Because right now, our allies don't trust us. Our enemies know that we are weak and we'll take advantage of that and exploit that. And our values are very questionable now. And one of those values is that we'll never leave an American behind. And the president even said that at the beginning of all of this and then backed away. So what are we? What are our values? What are our American values that we're willing to stand by that we're willing to sacrifice for, that we may even be willing to die for. What are those values? And right now, I think that the whole nation is in a state of confusion about that. Well, what I take away from the president's statement there is that we were, I'm just going to say, it, afraid of the Taliban. Yeah. Because if, they, if, if we set our own timeline and we didn't make it because we wanted to get all of the people out that we wanted to get out, and the Taliban wanted to, to take action against us. Well, I mean, we just we just knock them down. Now, I, I I'm not for uh, gratuitous violence, but we have to protect our interest, and we are supposed to be the most advanced, uh, equipped fighting force in the world. And we're going to let the Taliban determine for us the time frame because we're. It sounds what the president was saying to me says that he's afraid, that we're afraid of the Taliban. I don't think there's any question that that's what he was saying, and and I think that I, and I don't think that his spokespeople have uh, have done or said anything to dissuade us of that notion or that understanding of what he was saying there. He was afraid of the Taliban. I mean, look, if they when the Taliban uh, apparently, according to the latest reports, said, "Look, we'll we'll let you control Kabul until you're out of here," and we. We decided that we didn't want to do that, and we gave it to them. We told them that we would prefer that they handle it. What is that all about? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, this is just crazy, and uh, we're, we're going to pay for this. Well, General Boykin, I think you're absolutely right. It is one of the, uh, I think, the darkest days in American history when we, we do need to step back and ask the question, who are we? What do we really believe? What are we made of? What are those values that are... Uh, transcendent those values that we pass from one generation to the next because certainly uh, these are not the type of values that build an enduring nation no. general jerry boykin thanks so much for joining us